Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing? Sam Evans with you. This is Take Stock Live. I hope you're doing well and happy July 1st. I can't believe it. Here we go. Six months, six months of the year completed already. 2021 is halfway done. And here we are well into the summer and looking at uh, uh, the July 4th holiday weekend coming up here in the US. And obviously holidays hopefully everywhere else because guys it is the summer and the summer doldrums in the markets are continually usually historically kind of quiet so we're here to bring a little bit of fun and flavor to it on this day as well it's just two minutes after noon here on the east coast 5 p.m uh, if you're looking at the uk 6 p.m central europe can i just get it out my system and go come on england awesome to see us doing it overcoming our demons 2-0 over the Germans. Hey, Germany, it was our time. I think I'm tipping it right now. I'm tipping us to win the UEFA Championships. I'm excited. Young team, well done to your boys. Very, very happy being a soccer football fan. I've got to say football because I am I could be talking to my British counterparts right now. My football, soccer, I've been a fan all my life. That was an awesome thing to see as well. But we are here, Take Stock Live, powered by StockAbility.com. Do not just talk about soccer. No, we're here to talk about the markets. And today we have a very special subject. We're going to be talking about inflation. Oh my God, inflation. That sounds really dull. Okay, I know it does, <laughs> but it's a reality. Okay, inflation is something that's big. It's real. We have to be aware of it. And you know what? Because it could be deemed as a little bit of a dull thing, I'm going to spice it up by bringing my main man, my guest of honor, my co-host. Oh man, I just love having this guy on the show. Mr. Brian Dumresk, Momentum Coach. How are you, sir? Joining us from a wet kind of North Carolina, I believe right now, hey? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it's supposed to get a couple thunderstorms today and tomorrow, but then Saturday to Tuesday, it's going to be 86 and not a cloud in the sky. So a little barbecue, a little minor league baseball, a little golf, you know, so I'm looking forward to it. Beautiful. I'm not even uh, to playing golf with you. I've got a visit planned soon. I've been practicing my swing. Yeah, and, uh, there you I'm go. I'm wearing the golf threads today. I'm not actually playing golf, but I was out on the course just the other day hitting, and uh, yeah, heading to New York City myself this weekend. Oh, celebrate. nice. July 4th, exactly, it'll be nice, man. I feel like all I've been doing is going away lately, but, you know, working on the road, <laughs> which is kind of nice after a, over a year of lockdown. Brian, I wanted to get you on the show. New format of the show. We're going for about 30 minutes here. We are live on Facebook. We are live on on YouTube, so you can see us obviously right now. You're seeing us if you are watching through Facebook Live Stockability Channel, or you're going to be looking at us through the YouTube Stockability Channel as well, guys. This is a live show. I can see Bob Pellegrin, Phil Jackson watching the show right now. Feel free to type your questions in as we go. We love having a live audience, but remember, if you couldn't make it for whatever reason, this show is also recorded and all the archives are on there as well. Brian, today we want to talk about this subject here how inflation is hitting your wallet the idea of take stock live uh is to really kind of get into in, into like helping people with just basic understandings of what's going out there because the markets let's be honest the markets can be tricky they can be overwhelming i think so we want to break it down and if you and i can break it down into simple terms and i think you know we're on a good we're on a good way because i don't know about you i'm a simple man i like to talk about it in very simple approach wouldn't you say don't you think the markets are just way too complicated the way people posture about it in the press <laughs> Yes. Yes. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to be that complicated, you know, and that's the biggest problem. Even when it comes to tr day trading, whether you're a day right. trader or a swing trader, long-term trader, whatever, people tend to overcomplicate things. You yeah. know, anything you do in life, simpler is better. Oh, okay. Yes. I appreciate it. Just like golf, actually, you know, yeah. like, let the club do the work, you know, stop putting your arms in it. That's what everybody always tells me, you know, simpler no, anything, is better. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk, this is a big subject I think is not talked about a lot. But before we do that, I thought it'd be appropriate to join me as we look at today's markets. Brian, let's go over to the charts. Let's see where we're at right now on here. Let's go full screen on here so we can see S&P. Oh my gosh, let's take a look at the, let's just go on here. I like to look at those daily charts first of all. So everybody at home, including yourself, can see these nice and clear. So yep, let's go got maximize em. this. Zoom it, man. The uptrend is without doubt still in play. It looks like it today, ladies and gentlemen. We have a brand new high on the S&P 500, 4,303 points. <clears throat> what do you make of that, Brian? It's unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> what else can we I say? <laughs> <laughs> that's why you know when you trade don't have an opinion right. just go by what the chart is telling you it's up so what do you want to do in an uptrend you want to okay? buy it right buy and, and, and every try... time i don't know you but every time we've seen these little dips here or the dip here or the little sell-off here everyone's like oh this is it everyone wants to be a hero and call the top yet yeah. We've been saying it, right? This market has been continually making pullbacks, hitting support levels like it did just a couple of weeks ago, and off we go to the races again. 
Oh, this yeah. isn't an investor's market unless you've been in it a long time, though, right? I mean, to me, I keep looking at this and going, well, it's great that it's doing this, but this is not an investor's market. If you're not already in, and I'm talking maybe in since <clears> maybe, <throat> you know, at least the last six months, it always gets harder. And people go, well, Sam, the longer and longer I leave it, the more and more I'm missing out on. But the problem is the market's getting more expensive, isn't it? So it's costing more dollars to get in, right? Yeah, but also you just hit the nail on the head, the fear of missing out, you know, and you don't want to do that, you know. That's why people, when they invest day trade, swing trade, whatever it is, they just don't have a plan. They don't know what they're looking for. They're just kind of going off of a friend's recommendation or something like right. that, where, you know, right now the market's going up. But, you know, I'm looking at it saying, you know what, this needs to come back to reality a little bit. Yeah. And I'll wait. You know, I'm not shorting it. I'm waiting for it to come back to a level I could play off it or I'm going to go look for something else. And, and, uh, it's exactly. as simple as that. And I, and I think as well, I say to people right now, there are still opportunities out there. I'm seeing some opportunities for investment in the market, but I'm just going into this market still optimistically cautious. Positions that we've got of the bit that have been going for a long time, great, manage them. But I think there's more than enough return and income to be made, even in conditions like this. Because what concerns me, Brian, just getting back over to the charts right now, and I want to just zoom in this right here in this area here for you as we really explore this, you know, we, we're creeping up. We're not like going with any real frosty. Like if you take a look at this area that we had here, now we're starting to creep up. That makes it challenging, I think, as an investor. You're up, you're down, up a bit, down a bit. And I think at the point is, the, this is good trading conditions, I feel. This is great as a trader. Wouldn't you agree? Like if you're in it short term right now to make, make these moves? Yeah, yeah. Short short term moves are fine, yeah. you know. Uh, but like you said, you know, the, uh, the, the, the longer term investor, you know, you got to look at the larger time frames yeah, yeah, and find those real key areas. And that's, yeah. you just wait for it. If it doesn't come, all right, there's another bus going to come by, you know, later on. Yep. You know, that's really what it comes down to. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, again, like you say, what's just again, and I don't want to spend too long. So I really want to get into this, but it ties in. We're going to take a look at the Dow Jones now. Dow Jones features right now. Not seeing the same level of strength in the Dow. And this is what's no. been really concerning me is there is still resistance here in the Dow. Yeah. These markets are not synchronized. They're not in congruence right now. They're not all doing the same thing. And that is what concerns me. I see a ton of that. The sellers are there in the value stocks and there's buyers in the value stocks. When you have all of the indexes out of sync like that, that can be a tell, can't it? That there's there's there's, there's something bubbling under the surface that maybe the public aren't the, aware of. Yeah, right? the, there's nothing lining up here. It's crazy. You know, and uh, every time you look at a market, like, oh, I could buy this one, but I got to short that one. I, Here's a good resistance there. Yeah, crazy it's all times. over the place. Crazy time. Yeah, it NASDAQ. really is. I mean, look at the mighty NAS. Here we go again. But then the NASDAQ, S&P making a new high today. Let me <laughs> zoom it in for you guys. S&P may have made a new high. We put in a new high on the NASDAQ of 14.584 two days ago. And the last two days we've been selling off. Do you see just how out of whack this thing is, guys? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. That gives me a little bit of the heebie-jeebies. Yes, that is a technical term on here. <laughs> but when I, when I see that, I'm like, guys, you've got to invest in things as they are. The game is changing. NASDAQ, again, showing a little bit of weakness. And I think that there's some downside potential on this. I know you're looking at that as well, Brian, as well. Got to say, someone said, well, what do you think right now? I got to say this area right around here, nice buying opportunity on the NASDAQ, around 14,300 points on there i'd say on the nq nice key area there yeah i i, I agree 100 percent. you know i think the nasdaq you know took off and when they move uh fast like that to the upside you expect a natural retracement this way you could maybe possibly make another leg to the upside so but just be patient oh, you know just God. wait for your levels you there's no don't worry about missing out because you're going to make an emotional decision at the end of the day that's going to cost you money or I say learn to trade in the meantime and then don't worry yeah, about yeah, that exactly. stuff because I sit yeah, that helps. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually think there's better money to be made in trading than investing because we're going to talk about that in just a second and I'll exactly explain why. Why is there, even though the market's going up, why is there better money to potentially be made in trading than investing? Guys, that does time with inflation. That does time with the impact on your wallet at home as well. Let's talk about that in just a second. Finally, I call it the, 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 the runt of the litter. It is the Russell. I do love this market. I was in love with it more a year ago than it is now. Again, Chop City. I mean, I don't care what anyone says. Let's just focus on this area of the chart like this, Brian, so you can see it. Major resistance zones, major support zones. The thing's in equilibrium right now. We bounced a little bit, but I'm not getting my hopes. To me, this screams of a lot of work, and I just wouldn't be surprised to just see this exploring its range coming on as well. You know, I think you nailed that. You know, stick stick to the edges and don't diddle in the middle. Stick to the edges you know? and don't diddle in the middle. And, you know, it is. It's no man's land. Very changing. And again, we're yeah. seeing it. We're not seeing that same strength. 
you know, in the Russell. We're not seeing that same strength in the Dow, but we are kind of seeing it in the NASDAQ and ES. This is a market where we've got some <coughs> serious divergence in the equity, in the indexes. And that, guys, tells you a lot. There's a lot of mixed signals out there. People might be asking, well, what about the news then? Let's just go quickly do a recap of it, uh, Brian, and see what has been in the news today. Uh, and you and I can have a talk about this and, and see what our, uh, what our thoughts are on here. Let's just go back over. Going to pull up and take a look at what is dominating the news headlines. I've got to say, going into a holiday weekend, mate, it's not pretty. Uh, I mean, traditionally, we do see an upside. It is July 1st on here, but we've had a strong first half of 2021. So all the big boys are going to be celebrating that. Um, what else? Are we? Bond yields are ticking higher after new COVID era low in jobless claims. Okay. Um, so actually, government reported a lower than expected 364,000 new filings for unemployment benefits last week. But let's also remember... That's also a delay in that as well. I don't know. All I walk around, I might be controversial saying this, but everyone I meet right now, they just don't want to work because that's just what this environment seems to be. Krispy Kreme IPO prices below expected range as that went return to the public markets today as well. Uh, and then obviously Trump's whole organization, its CFO, is being indicted by the Manhattan Grand Jury. I mean, nothing really there to say, hey... There's some major news to get behind, right? Do you really pay attention to any of that? Because I like to go through the news, but I personally couldn't care less about any of that stuff, Brian. Could you? You know what's funny? I uh, I don't, because all that does is interfere with your thought process. You know, I want to look at a chart because that's where the hard facts lie. Yeah. But I, I am curious. You know, I like reading up on Tesla. I like reading up on certain yeah. things. I want to know what the you know what everybody's talking about and stuff. But it doesn't influence my trading at all. And it should. Okay. Have. And it you should. know, just uh, I'm a I'm a pure technical trader. I go by what the chart is telling me. Yeah. I try to keep my emotions, you know, at bay. I try to keep my opinion at bay. And, uh, you know, the news is all they're doing is kind of getting in the way of your thought process. Absolutely. Mm. So just while I'm off, like taking a drink now, let's reset. Let's get on to our subject. If you're just joining us right now, ladies and gentlemen, and just seeing what it are, Brian and I just did a. I'm giving him more airtime. This is it. This is yeah. He's had yeah. another promotion. My my co yeah. I couldn't do without this guy. <laughs> oh my god, I could you are you're a lifesaver, fella. You really, really are. So thank you very much for that. Brian and I actually just doing our little market recap right now as well. But let's just take a look again if you're just joining us today. Let's get talk about how inflation is hitting our wallet. Got some really interesting numbers that I would like to go through with you now right now, actually, Brian. And anybody looking at the show, um, may be interested in this as well. And I think this greatly impacts when we look at the market because, you know, what I want to do is I want to go over, let's just go back over to our charts for just a second. Remember, we're looking at the S&P. This is the weekly chart of the S&P 500. Let's just take it back to here right now and zoom in. I mean, just look at this. In fact, let's just look at it from October of last year. October, actually, here's December 2020. Right here. So this here, my friends, this is December 2020. And obviously this is today. I mean, look, market was at 3200 now at 4300 $1,100. This thing's gone up. This market's getting more and more expensive. OK, it is. And this is why I think it makes it harder and harder, Brian, for investors to actually start to make any real money out of this market because you need more dollars to put into the in, into the market itself. So we're seeing inflation in the stock market itself, but there's some other factors as well. And I think inflation is such an important topic. And for me, something that we don't talk about enough. I don't know, you like to read the news a bit. I like to read the news a bit. All I've been hearing for the last 10 years, let's even go to five, okay? Because we cut interest rates to like historical lows in 2009. When change 2008, right? Credit crunch, ha crunch happened in 2008. Can you believe it? It was that long ago, you know? No. Can't believe it, you know? And <clears throat> we, 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 you know, 12 years ago, you know, 13 years ago, we cut interest rates to zero, you know, to, to just try and pump money back in the economy, stimulate and so on. But then we've left interest rates at lows. Now, remember this, guys. Anybody, you know, looking at the show right now, it's very simple. And, and I'm not an economist by any stretch of the imagination, but the numbers are very simple. If the cost of goods goes up, pint of milk, loaf of bread, gas, homes, all that stuff. And let's face it, Brian, has everything been going up? I mean, oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, look at the housing market finally, apparently slowing down a little bit. If the cost of goods goes up, what that means is we're seeing inflation. I look at it like this. Is my cost of living increasing or decreasing? If stuff's getting more expensive, that means that there's demand. People are buying stuff like homes, driving the prices up. So your dollars in your paycheck aren't going as far, right? It's pretty simple. We call that inflation. Problem is, if inflation gets too high, nobody can afford a loaf of bread anymore. Nobody can afford a car. Nobody can afford... Do you know, by the way, by the way, Brian, used cars have gone up by 30% this year. Used they can't cars. get them. 
They Don't, can't get them. I could sell my five-year-old truck now for more than I paid for it. And it's five years old. It has only got 35,000 on the clock. And I like I love that thing as almost as much as I love my wife. But the thing is, you know, you got to understand on here, everything's going up everything's going up and and that that that's impacting because our dollars don't go as far you've been feeling the pinching inflation before i throw some numbers at you here brian you, you know what's funny even uh you know, don't make fun of me right now but i'm going to use this as an example do it. so i like making fun i, of I you, think i know you, i know you do cool. <laughs> so i think it was about a couple of weeks ago i would go I, I eat a lot of uh salad believe it or not i've been okay. dieting i lost about 25 pounds so eat more salad and a bag of salad was like 2.99 right I was at the store last night. It was three ninety nine. You say now, you know? how, and now, now. Let me ask you this: What's the timeline difference that we're looking at on that? Then, so between when it was two ninety nine and three ninety nine, probably about a month. Jeez. So, uh, uh, you know, it went up so that. That's thirty three percent. That's a thirty three percent increase in its price. I was actually with my uh, me and my <laughs> wife were at the store last night, right? And uh, I'm like, a bag of salads three ninety nine. I'm like, I'm not buying it. I'm like, I'm going to become a you know a chubby guy again. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go down Sonic and buy myself one of those cheap meals. Or I'm gonna go and get a Dairy King burger meal. There you <laughs> yeah, go. Exactly. I mean, like <laughs> Burger King, four for four bucks or something. There whatever it go. is. There you go. There you go. I mean, it is crazy. All right. So while you're on that subject, let me give everybody here a rundown of some of this right now. You ready for this, guys? Some interesting things that we have seen. Okay, in the as of late. So. We, they put this down to the U.S. booming recovery is the reason for inflation. Well, the other reason we've got inflation is because we've got cheap money. The money supply has been there since 2009. Whatever way you look at it, the money supply has been there. Okay. Credit is available. Guys, Brian, I don't know about you. This was like 2007. Again, all I'm getting in the post is refinance. Take a home equity line of credit. Here's another credit card. I've got enough credit cards, thank you very much. I don't need any more. I don't carry debt on credit cards. I just use the points to buy PlayStation 5s. That's the way I do it, you know. But the point is, I'm not interested in any of that stuff. But apparently, this is the thing, right? It, with the, finally, the Fed has come off of its fence. And this is what scares me. The Fed, the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve indicated, Brian, that it expects to raise rates by the end of 2023. We're in 2021. We're going to leave yeah, rates where they are now. You ask me, the Federal Reserve is petrified, scared to death of putting rates up because of the bigger impact it's going to have on this economy. And, the, and, and, and with all that's going on, Brian... Look at these numbers. Okay, this is the damage of not putting rates. Look at how inflation is vexing. It's ready. You should be uh, for, right. Here's what's happening on here. Right, R consumer prices have risen by five percent in May from last year. That's the fastest pace since two thousand and eight. Gas, petrol prices fifty six percent higher than they were last year. Cars, used car prices up thirty percent. Insurance up seventy percent. Flights up twenty four percent. OK, if you want a washing machine and dryers, home appliances, 26 percent increase. OK, Ubers and Lyfts have gone up by 11 percent. Food and beverages, you know this, Brian. Restaurant food up 4 percent. Alcohol up just under 2 percent. Cereal and baked goods up 1 percent. Even peanut butter is on the list. I'm feeling it everywhere. Yeah, apparently there's no cause for concern and the Fed's not going to put rates up for another two years. Sorry, are we getting into a world where we're, none of us are going to be afford to live? What do you take away from that? Uh, yes, you're, you're actually right. I mean, that's the scary part. You know, everyone's uh, paycheck is the same, but everything else is more expensive. So now right. where do you cut? What do you do as a homeowner or, or a citizen of the United States? What do you do? How do you fight this? And this, I don't is, have a global, an and this is a global problem. This is a global problem because all of them are doing it as well. You know, a global problem, right? Yeah. It's funny because you said appliances. I'm uh, I'm currently building a house right now and we're moving in in about a month and a half. So mm -hmm. we have to go tonight and get appliances and stuff like that. So now I'm scared to go and buy them. Oh, we're yeah. up 25%. <laughs> <laughs> get a nice 10 uh, year guarantee with them. I mean, yeah, like, but yeah. that, that, that is it. I mean, this is the reality. And it's really interesting on subject appliances, you know. So when they look at, but 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 this is as of now, they've only just started to address it. And in my opinion, the powers that be always address this stuff way too late. I mean, always do it way too late. If we go back and look, there's never been a real issue with, with, with inflation. The Fed and all the central banks and all the economists have been saying, Brian, nah, it's not an issue. It's not an issue. We're all good. 
But do you know when they measure overall inflation, they include everything. I mean, I'm talking everything from electrical appliances to homes to gas to, to car prices. And there are some things that haven't gone up. So it's an average, right? So you've got things like, as we know over here, houses, huge rise in houses. Let's do it without hands. Everyone can see huge rise in houses. Okay. But on the other end of this spectrum, some of the things that have come down consistently over the years are things like toasters. Okay, and actually typically appliances. That's the scary thing, by the way. We'll get to your appliances in a minute, not, not to give you even more of a concern. <laughs> Thanks. But typically things like TVs, computers, toasters and all that, they've actually come down. You know, toasters are, you know, are not as expensive as they were 50 years ago, right? The common tension, the cost of labor's come down. But still we're seeing that. So what's happened over the last, you know, 10 years or so, we say, well, a lot of electrical goods haven't gone up a lot, even though cars and houses and things have. So the mean or the average is, mm, we're kind of where we are because this has gone up and this has come down. They fudge the figures because obviously governments love to do that, right? They love to fudge the figures. But now we're seeing it in things like appliances and, and cars. I mean, since when have you ever heard of used cars going up? You know, so on that subject, I actually I had a car that I used for my commuter car uh, about two years ago. Yeah. And, you know, I, I owed small on it, you know, and uh, so I we got a new car down here. We got a new car and um certified pre-owned car whatever they gave me about 20 percent over book value for my old car and i had a wow. ton of miles on it beat up they didn't care they're just like look we need cars right. we have nothing to sell and you drive past cars. a lot yeah we were in an accurate dealership yeah and the, the lot was empty you know it's with the used cars they're dying for them unbelievable they're dying for them my boy yeah. Sean Kroger giving you a shout out right now. Skill build, I love it. Lumber prices, 285%. You know it, Sean, I know it. Dude, with all those trucks you've got, you should sell a couple of them because you'll be making bank. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. This is the time to even trade in the used car to get a better deal on the new car. It's unheard of. It's unheard of. We're celebrating it now, though. In some ways, it works. But the problem is, in the long run, it doesn't. Because what my concern is, is this. How is it impacting this? And this here is where we've got the problem. Because this is going up too. But to me, these whole markets have been fueled by low, inter by low interest rates. Low interest rates means the cost of borrowing is next to nothing. Which therefore means that, guess what? Everything's cheap, so people buy more stuff that they don't need, which therefore drives the price up. And now we're seeing the effects of inflation. And now you've got this problem. We're in a vicious conundrum right now, Brian. When, you know, as, as, as Sean was just pointing on the live on their show, 285% increase in lumber that we saw. There's things like the semiconductor switch. I was just saying about PlayStation 5, right? So I'm a gamer. I finally managed to get myself a PlayStation 5. Those things have been in short supply. The resale value, I think costs 400 bucks. I could sell it for 1200 bucks right now because they're in short supply. Why? Because semiconductors. But here's the problem you've got. I've got a buddy of mine whose hair can AC, AC system broke. He needed to install a new AC system. Poor guy. Thankfully, he got it done last week just before the heat wave, right? Been sleeping you know, on in his basement floor. Couldn't get a new AC unit installed for four weeks. You know why they didn't have the parts? Because the manufacturers can't find labor. Because everybody's sitting back, quitting their jobs, taking it easy right now, don't want to work. That is not helping inflation. Because now people aren't doing the jobs. Guess what? The jobs are not producing the goods. The goods, are in low, the goods are in low supply, but people still want them. Therefore, the price is going up. Don't you see? It's a vicious circle. People want their cake and they want to eat it. No one's talking about this, Brian. It scares the crap out of me. It, well, <clears throat> you touched on a couple of points I'd like to uh, add on to Go here. For First it. one, but it was about the lumber. Yeah. So I told you I'm building a house. Okay. And I, and I got lucky. My house is already framed out. They just finished drywalling it literally the other day. So I don't have to worry well, knock on wood, I don't have to worry about them <laughs> jacking the price up on me again. You but, signed a contract now, you're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my neighbor downstairs, he's building a house as well. And he goes, even though he's, I, I don't know if he signed the contract or what it was, but he actually said, he goes, you know, we, we said, okay, the house is 500. They came back and said, well, you know, materials are going up, so we got to charge it now. The house is 525. Wow. Okay, and they that's what they're doing. You could either take it or you could actually just forfeit it and we'll find somebody else to buy it. You know, they don't care. The second thing I want to talk about is uh, ammunition. So I'm in North Carolina now, yeah. okay? And I've never had a gun. I fired a gun when I was a kid. I know nothing about them. And a half mile away from where I live is where I walk a lot. There's a, uh, 
a shopping complex and there's a gun store in the middle of the shopping complex where I thought was kind of crazy, but also kind of cool as well. <laughs> so one day I went for my walk and I, I'm like, you know, I'm going to walk in there and the place is packed two o'clock on a Saturday, uh, on a Tuesday afternoon, the place is packed. So I obviously, I stood out like a sore thumb because I know nothing about guns, guns. Okay. So the guy, the one guy who works at Conservative goes, Hey man, you need some help. I'm like, yeah, we'll give that away. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. I, you know, eventually I want to get a gun or something like right. that. I go, is this place always like this? He goes, well, there's an ammunition shortage. Yes, there is. So he goes, you see those bolts that we have over there or the ammunition we have over there on the, on those shelves? He goes, that's all we have. He goes, the company that we're ordering from has over a billion dollars in back orders. Yeah. Billion dollars. So now he goes, we used to sell this box of bullets for 15 bucks. He goes, we're selling for 30 now. Yeah. Okay. And it's just, I mean, you, you see it in everything now, you know? Well, why should we, yeah, Sean, we were talking about that. Sean Kroger watching the show right now. We were talking just about that a couple of weeks ago as well. Good friend of mine, Courtney, local police officer as well. Just saying, oh, even you go. the police stations are in this as well. I mean, it's a crazy Everybody. Type. It affects everybody. The problem is, though, if the cost of goods keeps getting up, what is it going to take to keep driving the price? Let's apply this now to the stock market. We've got about 10 minutes before we're going to wrap this up. Let's go back over to our charts, Brian, okay? Yeah, there you go. And Sorry. when we look at our charts, let's apply it to the market. Here's your S&P 500. Well, it's great. Everyone's cheering. Woohoo! Dancing in the streets. Market's going up. But the problem is this. If your dollars aren't going as far and you're looking to keep investing in the stock market, looking to get a yield, guess what? Your dollars aren't going as far on the S&P. Your dollars aren't going as far on as far in on, on the stocks you can't buy as much as you could get to the point where hey are we gonna i be so most people are gonna have spare cash do we have the money to invest right now because here's the problem it's eating into everything if your dollars aren't going as far you've got less dollars to invest in this if people don't keep buying the market the market's not going to go up and guess what a lot of people who need cash need it quickly if there's one little bit of a wobble in all of this guess what they're going to do they're going to start pulling money out of investments to get cash what's that going to do it's going to create supply it's going to push the market down and not only that if we get to a point of inflation getting so unbearable what's going to happen when the fed does put its rates up rates have to go up you want to see another interesting chart i'll show you another interesting chart right now this is the chart again that not to me and not enough people look at here it is brian this is the u.s 30 year bond yield percentage this wow. is from 1980 1981 into today we have been in a consistent downward trend yields are going down bond prices are going to go up rates at two percent right now the problem is you can't go much lower nothing goes one way forever when rates go up which is inevitable it means creditors they want their money the people who are borrowing can't afford to pay it back. I mean, I ask you this, going back to the S&P, how many companies do we think in the S&P 500, going back over to this chart here, literally extended their line of credit over the last 10 years after the great credit crunch and literally took money, money, money at next to nothing to reinvest in their business, running a huge line of credit right now. And if rates do go up, they're going to be affected. How many companies in the S&P 500 do you think would get hit? by an increase in rates. And what's that going to do to them? It's going to slow them down. Yep, it's going to slow their production down. It's going to mean layoffs for them. It, it, it's a nasty thing. To me, inflation is the biggest fear I've got and how rates are tied to that. Again, I'm talking about that. Then you got your companies, your small, your mid-cap, your low ends, your Russells. How many companies are going to be affected in the Russell by this? I mean, this is absolutely, you know, it's absolutely crazy. You know, and then you've got all the companies that the mum and pop shops in, in the private sector, small businesses that are on a line of credit that also can't afford to pay that credit. And don't even get me started. Don't even get me started on how much government. So, right. To me, it's, it literally is, you know, a, 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 it's a crap storm. I could say something else, but it's a crap storm waiting to happen. And I and, you know, when I look at this, I, I, I. I, I, I find, you know, Hollis is just asking, do you view fractional shares, ETFs and call option as strategies for budget conscious investors or intimidated by stratus, status, uh, stratospheric stock prices? You know, I'm not a big fan of fractional shares. I think all fractional shares do is benefit the, the, the company. You know, I'm sorry if people buy like $100 of the stock, you know, at these prices, they, 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 the return they're going to get on the, these prices, I think, Brian, it's just not even worth it. 
you know i think fractional shares are just giving volume all fractional shares are doing is helping companies like robin hood in my opinion you know i'd rather use leverage well, i'd rather well, use that personally what do you think well, about you, that, Brian? You, you, well you know i don't disagree with the fractional part of it uh but with inflation looming the way it is right now you know investing in individual companies is the greatest risk I think okay so. so it also depends on how old do you you know, if you're 65 you years got? old, well, that well, that's my point is, you know, your greatest asset is our time, you know, because we don't know when it's going to run out. You know, if you're a 20 year old kid or a 25 year old kid in the workforce and you want to start doing that, that's fine. You know, but if you're 60 years old, and you start doing that. Well, guess what? You know, I think uh, you should re, you know, I don't uh, think, yeah, I think uh, take another look. I think fractional shares are great for a generation. I do. And, and that's how I put it. It's like a great new generation of investors. But even still at these prices to invest on a fractional level, they're not really making any great return. It's well, 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 so I yes. say stash your cash and get ready to buy at a better price. That's what well, I say with your fractional. Well, yes, I agree with that because I had a friend of mine who was doing fractional shares with McDonald's, you know, 25, 30 years ago. And I mean, he was buying it at 30, 40, $50 right. and I think at top 200. So yeah. he was like, okay, but great investment gonna, strategy, but he's not going to get the same result if he started now buying it. At this exactly. Price. My point. It depends when you, uh, uh, when you start doing it, how old are you and where are we price wise? Think about it. It's a pie, right? This is the way I look at it. Think about your pie. Okay. You got a pie and it's divided up into six pieces, you know, great. Fractional shares are dividing that pie up into a thousand pieces. Okay. That's all it is. And you know what? If you've got a smaller piece, a smaller piece of the pie, you're going to get less fed. That's it. The pie, it's a piece, more slices you want, the higher the pie, price of the pie is, the more you've got to pay. Well, if the pie overall is a cheap pie, you can afford to, afford to buy a bigger piece of the pie. And that's what I'd say, you know, your friend buying McDonald's shares at, you know, $30 a share. Wonderful way. And then you can build, build, build. Would you, could you have the same success if you started from zero right now, entering at $200 a share fractionals? No. Uh, I, I the, would be, yeah, wait, yeah. Because again, think about that growth. What are we looking at? Over a thousand percent growth? $30 to 200 <laughs> Well, to get a thousand, thousand percent growth on McDonald's now, it's got to go to $20,000 a share. Ain't going to happen. Right? Yeah, I, I, I agree. You so know, um... it's all about, it's, it's all that, you know, so it's, there's, there's all different, there's all different ways. My belief is right now how do you then oh look we we address that inflation is a problem it's going to be a problem okay not enough people are talking about it as well it's affecting it we live in a world now very simply put where people need extra cash there's side hustles you need to earn more money i mean that's a simple thing i look at it like that okay if everything's getting more expensive you better figure out a way to make more money right or am i just being too basic about it brian no no you you have to you know, you got to survive. How are you going to survive? What are you going to do? You got to learn a way to make more money. I mean, that's it. And to me, the markets offer an amazing way. As you guys know, you know, if you've ever been a regular viewer of the show, I'm an active day trader. You are too. I love the Dow Jones. I love what the Dow Jones represents. I love trading it. I think it's an awesome market. And for me, looking at it like this now on a smaller time frame here, seeing it here on a one hour chart and, the, and the, uh, uh, on, the, on a daily chart, excuse me, and the fluctuations that it makes on a day to day basis. This is a one day chart. This is one hour chart. There's more than enough opportunity for people to generate extra income from the day to day movements of this market. OK, even if they don't move a lot. OK, there is opportunity to do that, but you've got to use your money the right way. And that to me is where leverage and using markets like options and futures come in. So Hollis, I think a better way is call options, put options using leverage for people to participate. Your risk is still going to be lower. You just need to know what you're doing before you do it. That's the that's the hustle for me, you know, because well, what's care. his name? Hollis? Hollis. Hollis is yeah. Hollis is just saying on here. Yes. Yeah. Hollis Hurtle. Hollis. It's about managing your risk. Yeah. OK, it's about finding those high quality entry points and using leverage to your advantage. You could use uh, you can get more out of it with less out of your own pocket yeah. is basically what it is. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it gives you a consistent you know, exposure when you're using a leverage asset class with a consistent risk, which is manageable, manageable in any market condition. You are not. Let's face it right now. I could buy thirty four thousand. I'm looking at. This contract's going to cost about $160,000 and I can control that contract with a couple of thousand bucks. I can control $160,000 of stock with a couple of thousand dollars. I can control $16,000 of stock with $200. 
that and, and manage my risk accordingly. That for me is the way you generate real returns in these markets. And the great thing is when it goes down, it's just as easy as well. That for me is the answer to inflation, guys. If you've just tuned into the show and you're saying, okay, so what's the takeaway? <clears throat> Stuff's getting more expensive, people. That's the way. And what are you going to do? Sit back and go, I've got the same rate of income right now. And I'm just going to hope it comes back down again. What if it keeps going? The way to do it is increase your cash flow and find opportunities and ways to increase your income. Trading the markets is one way to do it. You know, getting a side hustle, waiting on tables, whatever. There's many ways to do it. We're just looking at one particular way of doing it and being prepared for the things that come. And here's one of the things. This is what I love. And I want to get your opinion on it before we do your call, my put, Brian. And then we're going to wrap up shortly. Here's a cool thing about it. What's the takeaway? If inflation does, if the bubble does burst, if inflation becomes unbearable, rates have to go up and it, we take a hit in the market. It's not going to affect our ability to still potentially profit from those markets when they fall apart. It's recession proof too, right? Learning how to trade these <clears throat> markets this way. What are your thoughts on that? I could not agree more. And more importantly, once you learn how to trade the right way, you could also control your long-term investments as well. You know, get out of the market, yeah. you know, uh, cut some off, uh, put go to cash. Yeah. I mean, there's alternatives if you learn to do what you're doing. And also, as far as the side also go in trading, look, we just want opportunities. You know, we have rules that we follow and we just follow the rules. And, you know, whatever the opportunity presents us, hey, look, some days there's nothing there and, you know, you don't want to force it, but you got to stick to the plan, stick to your rules. OK, because you can make money in any market. You can make money in any market condition if you know what you're looking at. Doesn't That's matter, the matter if it. the world's doesn't doesn't matter if the world's literally falling apart as well no, and, there's no. a lot of, and there's a lot of scary things brewing on the surface right now and also you know that brings up a good point i've said this before on the show too you know when markets going up right now what are they doing they're a slow trend to the upside yeah. right it's like they, it's called taking the stairs up and also when the selling kicks in what happens they go down pretty fast it's yes, like jumping do. out of the window you look what happened with covid last year look how fast they sold off you know, if you're one of those people getting ready to retire or whatever, or or anything like older in life or whatever, and all of a sudden that happens to you now, yep. that could totally wipe you out. Yep. Wouldn't you rather be prepared and know how to manage that trade right now instead of saying, oh, it'll come back, it'll come back, it always comes back. Well, that's what the passive investor says. That's great if you're 30, not when you're 65. Right. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. All about being prepared, guys. Brian, yes. we've got a couple of minutes. Let's do your call, my put, our regular feature on the show every week. Only usually when I have a guest we do this, but your call, my put. One of us is bullish. We think the mark, we, we pick something we think is going to go up. One of us thinks about, uh, puts down a, an asset or stock or a forex pair that we think is going to go down. Brian, you first. You're taking the call or put. What are you bullish on? What are you bearish on? What should we look at? Uh, I'm going to go with the call side here. And okay. um, I'm looking at the XLU. Um, not quite at my entry point yet, but a little bit lower down. Tell around us about these... anyone doesn't know what is XLU, please. Oh, sorry. It's the uh, uh, utility ETF. Utility ETF. All right. What are yeah. we looking at, Brian? Uh, You're looking for a buying uh, opportunity was... on here? What time frame do you want to look at? Yeah, I was looking at the day. I believe the daily chart on around 62 and a half to 61 ish. Um, I was looking at some zone. So you want uh, it a little bit cheaper, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right in that general area down around there a little bit. I think you're looking a little bit higher around this area. Yeah. There you go. Let me redraw that for you. 62 to 61. So you want a little bit more downside on this thing before you enter it. Not in any I rush. I do. This no. Is that no, like I said, I, I you know, I'm about. very, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a conservative person with my entries. You know, there are things that I like uh, about that. Um, I'm going to wait for it. If it doesn't come in, then I'll reassess after it makes a move one way or another. Beautiful, beautiful. And you think there's a long-term play on that, my friend? Because let's go look at this on the larger time frames as well and see and you know, the trend has been strong. It looks like it needs a pullback. It looks like it's recovering a bit on this weekly chart, still making those higher highs and higher lows. Struggled a little bit to just get through these highs, but I like where it's sitting right now. And I think on the weekly charts, it's got some opportunity there as well. So it looks to me more like a longer term play. Or yeah, what's yeah. your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the XLU is not like a day trading no. vehicle. It's more of a, a longer term play. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Love it. Nice add to the like portfolio, that. but, but at the right price, down around 60, 62. Yeah. Lovely. We all need utilities, right? Yes, we do. And a good, there's a good <laughs> fundamental behind that. What we don't necessarily need, though, is a really expensive electric car. No. And uh, especially now, I'm really psyched about the Ford F-150 electric because I'm a trucker, as many of you guys may know. I drive trucks. I love trucks. They're my thing. Uh, Tesla, I still like Tesla down at $500, but I'm going to just pull this weekly chart up right now. going to go full screen on here so everybody can see it. 
It's had a bit of a recovery, but man, I feel like there is some pressure on the Tesla coming in right here. It might already be triggering, but to me, $700. $700 here is a massive mountain for Tesla to climb right now. I just think this thing's overpriced. I keep saying it from a fundamental point of view. There is competition for this company. I like their vehicles. I do, but I would not even be interested in sniffing that market until it gets down to here. I just think this is setting up to roll over yep. again. I really do. And retesting the lows around 600, 550, Brian. Overbought, oversold. Am I being a hater? I'm not. I like the company, but I just think this thing was overdone. I agree with you 100% on that as well. Yeah. It, there's not a lot I really to do. Say. I've been eyeing up I've been eyeing up your support zone down there for quite some time as well. It's just weakness. That's all I see is weakness, weakness, weakness in this market. I don't see anything but weakness. That is it. Tesla, I'm sorry. Elon, I love you. Hey, listen, you don't need my dollars, mate. You've got more than enough of your own. So <laughs> yeah. I don't feel so bad about that. But that's the reality of it. You know, Tesla, great, great thing. But again, this thing needs to come down. It does need to come down. Brian, great show. Really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Yeah, what awesome. are you up to this holiday weekend then? So he's just going to be cooking uh... and chilling. That's it. A uh, little golf, going to a minor league baseball game. Right. Uh, Dur Durham is not that far away, so they've got the Durham Bulls, which is, nice. uh, if anybody saw the movie Bull Durham. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Space, uh. <laughs> so uh, it's a great little festival. Nice. they got fireworks. So me and the wife are going to go there July 4th for the uh, fireworks festivities as well. Good. Your first July your, well, yeah. your, your first July, your first July 4th uh, in the Carolinas. Very, very yes. cool. Well, yes. I'm looking forward yeah. to visiting yeah, you yeah. as well. Yeah. What are you doing? New York City, man. That's it. New York City. Heading up to New York City again. Spend some time out in Long Island. Going into the city. Taking the kid to the museum and everything. To the Natural History Museum. It's oh, gonna awesome. It's going to be nice. Be a good time. Awesome. Do a little swimming and all that kind of stuff. So it's all good. All good. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Well, listen, Brian. Love to get you back on the show in a couple of weeks, okay? I uh, always love having you here. Thank you for stepping up as well. Have a wonderful weekend. And happy July 4th to you, my friend. Thanks. You too. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Brian Dumaresk, Student Momentum Coach at Stockability, joining us today as we talk about the real cost of inflation. If you like what you heard, if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, all of these good things as well, you know the place to go, guys. Uh, you get in touch with us. Brian may be one of the people you actually speak to on here, but let's go over and take you, show you where you can find out more about what we do. Take Stock Live is powered to you by Stockability.com. Let's head over to Stockability here where you can see our experienced team and everything we have to offer as a company. You can check us out by registering for one of our free webinars. To do that, scroll down to the bottom where you can actually look at our next webinar, which is coming up uh, on July 13th, just a couple of weeks away, Tuesday, July 13th, which is all about how to learn to become a funded trader. Yes, what skills and what things do you need to focus on to trade somebody else's money? And then back to back on July 7th, and August uh, 14th, 4th, we are running two webinars on how to trade crypto without actually owning crypto. Want to get into the world of cryptocurrency, maybe trade it for income, generate wealth, but not actually trade crypto? Mm, your ears are pricking up right now. Register for either one of those complimentary webinars and we will talk all about that as well. Uh, hosted by myself, Sam Evans, I look forward to it. And in the meantime, if you want to start find out a little bit about how to take control, find out more about the markets, what's your best entry point? Heck, you don't even need to do it with us. I just encourage you to go and find out more whatever happens, okay? Whether you get formal education or not, go find out about how these markets really work. It's an important thing. We're on the precipice of changing the world. We're here to help you. And if we don't help you, go find help from someone if you're struggling right now. Stockability is here to help. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, for being here as always, making this show what it is. We have been broadcasting here on Facebook Live every week, every Thursday at 12 noon Eastern. Also, simultaneous broadcast on our YouTube channel, the Stockability YouTube channel. Thank you for your input, questions, all of that kind of good stuff. You know where to reach us. Leave your comments. Like our page, share our page, go help us out. We're spreading the word. We're getting bigger and bigger. And just pick up the phone or drop us an email if you want to chat to a real human being who can have a grown-up conversation with you about what you can do to start making your money work for you in a better way as well. My name is Sam Evans. This has been Take Stock Live. Have a fantastic weekend. Happy July 4th to all my fellow American citizens and all my family here. Love to all the family are there. And come on England on Saturday. I'll see you at 8 p.m. UK time as well as we go up against Ukraine. I think it's a great weekend ahead. Stay healthy out there. Stay be well. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.